Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Digimon Explained. My name is Jesse and in this video we are going to get back to the other amazing Digimon out there created by fans who are left behind for us to be explored thoroughly. Something that should happen if we want to make sure the whole community gets on board on this journey. In this video we are going to explore the Digimon made by... Drums please! William Boom! Shout out to William Boom for having made these amazing Digimon versions of the Pokemon Eevee's evolutions, sometimes even called Eeveelution. I hope you are all a bit familiar with the Pokemon Eevee, one of the more popular Pokemon creatures out there, best known for its ultra diverse evolution path. 8 to be precise, meaning that I might talk a bit longer, which I hope will not bother you too much. Might I suggest that you relax and kick back while we go through all of them one by one. And before we go ahead, please, if you have a Twitter account, go and thank William Boom for this amazing work. You can even send the link towards this video if you want. I'm sure the author will appreciate it. Again, we are one community, so let us please support one another. Alright, let us get into it. What is the first thing that gets into your mind when you look at these 8 Digimon who, well, once were Pokemon? I think they are all very, very well made. In fact, they all look exactly like Digimon. I mean, they are. They have their place in the universe. They really do. So, what we'll do here is take a look at all of them, one by one, and treat them like we have always treated Digimon on this channel. We're going to make an extensive profile analysis and come up with some theories and ideas about their roles and more. First things first, for those who are new on this channel, I do want to tell you that Digimon is quite sophisticated as a franchise. The fact that the whole universe is linked to everything that is digital and the internet. This has led the franchise to give credits to other franchises and, in a way, include them in this whole Digimon universe. Or well, rather multiverse, considering the different storylines. Take Omedamon, for example. It is an unidentified Digimon, yet canon Digimon, born from the data of a Metabots game. Now, Metabots is a totally different franchise with no links whatsoever to Digimon, and yet we have a Digimon created from the data of two Metabots, one named Metabi and the other Rokusho, and you can see their heads on Omedamon's shoulders. We did explain this Digimon in depth, you can find the link towards it in the description box. But the point I'm trying to make is that the Digimon franchise is so big and sophisticated up to a point where it can take in the data of creatures from other known franchises and incorporate them in the digital universe and make them become their own independent Digimon digital entities. So by that logic, it shouldn't be much of a surprise to see a Digimon like the one created by William Boom. It should indeed be possible to see a Digimon walking around with Pokemon data. Which brings us to the Pokemon Eevee, arguably the most, shall I call it, complicated Pokemon out there? In many cases, Eevee is among the more fascinating creatures out there. It even reminds me of a Digimon in terms of its evolution path, which is so big and diverse. When I asked about your opinions in the Digimon Explained community page, some of you really did Eevee justice by explaining how interesting and very complex this Pokemon is. So we are first going to take a look at Eevee and make sure we understand this one first before explaining its Digimon variants. Andres Marrero wrote the following. Eevee as a Pokemon perfectly embodies the concept of evolution. As a Pokemon, it is incredibly adaptable due to its unstable genetic code and evolution is used to achieve stability. For Eevee, evolution is not a matter of if, but when, because every little thing will cause it to evolve. With Eevee's unstable gene, it can indeed evolve into a form that is permanent, which would indeed inspire more stability. We do have a problem though. How would Eevee digivolve once found inside the Digimon universe? Think about it. Eevee has the ability to evolve into 8 different evolutions triggered by the environment, the time of the day, friendship levels, or simply the usage of the evolutionary stones like the Water Stone, Thunder Stone, Fire Stone, Leaf Stone and Ice Stone. For the environments, the time of the day and friendship levels, we could say we have it covered, but what about the evolutionary stones? I don't think we can find some of those in the Digimon world, right? Sleek MU wrote the following. Eevee might work well in the Digimon universe, but their way of evolution would be different. Instead of touching an elemental stone, 
EV or EVMON would evolve from the environment or the data of Digimon they fought. For example, if an EV fought a Digimon that has plant-like attributes and ate its data, it would probably evolve to a Leafeon and so on. Sure, it may fight Digimon with certain attributes and Digivolve based on what attribute its form might have, but something else is bothering me. Look at all these forms. At what level are they? Champion? Ultimate? Mega? Or maybe Armor? The answer to this question is of the utmost importance, as it would, or rather could, make all of Eevee's potential fights either relevant or irrelevant, and unfortunately for us that the author didn't really specify the levels either. As many mega-level Digimon tend to take on a more humanoid form, then in a way, to me at least, it appears as though these Digimon variant of Eevee's evolutions are at the mega level. Maybe ultimate, if it's hard for some of us to digest. If they are indeed at the ultimate level or mega level, then that would mean that Eevee would be missing its champion forms. And please, don't forget to take into account Omedamon, who is composed of two life forms that fused and became a mega level Digimon. The same might apply to Eevee's Digimon Digivolution. Marine Solar Roddy following. Armor egg-like items would fit the best to bring Eevee to these 8 new forms, but I could also see human spirit-like items influence its digivolution. At the end though, I think it would be more believable if Eevee just digivolves into whatever data it absorbed the most. Like if an Eevee killed a lot of aquatic Digimon, their data would turn Eevee into a Vaporeon, killing a lot of electric foes or maybe insects and machines considering their heritage would turn it to Jolteon, etc. I'm only wondering how likely it would be that Eevee would fight enough Digimon of the same type, defeat them, enough up to a point it would end up digivolving into one of Valiant Boom's Digimon without dying in the process. Don't forget that the chances for a Digimon to actually digivolve into its champion form is already extremely low. And if you were to add the condition that it would have to defeat specific types of Digimon multiple times before it digivolves, it does really sound unlikely in my ears. My suggestion, to come with a possible explanation, I suggest that we go ahead and discuss the 8 forms first, and based on their design and what info we might get, we might end up finding an interesting origin story. Here we have the Digimon equivalent of the Pokemon Flareon. This one is called Flareomon, one that doesn't look quite as friendly as its Pokemon counterpart. In fact, it looks like a very fearless warrior, ready to do battle, and as the author gave it the virus type, we can assume that its personality is going to be one that is driven by power with a strong will to dominate its environment. Personality-wise, that would be quite the opposite of Flareon, who is quite shy. It is one that is very emotionally sensible and even nervous when meeting people. Loyal, yes, but nervous. But do not confuse shyness with weakness. Flareon has a body temperature that can reach up to 1650 degrees Fahrenheit or about 900 degrees Celsius before battle. And the fire that is expelled from its mouth is even hotter and can reach around 3100 degrees Fahrenheit or 1700 degrees Celsius. In the case of Flareomon, we don't know what degrees its flames could reach, unfortunately. We do know, however, that its mane turns to fire when it unleashes its full power. This can be seen as an enhancement as Flareon's fur is used only to release heat so that it does not suffocate. When taking a closer look at Flareomon's appearance from head to toe, I do see quite a few similarities with Agunimon, a wizard Digimon with the ability to freely manipulate flames. I also see references to the Digi Egg of Courage when you look at its foot and the armor on its body, and you might also find quite a few similarities to Apollomon, the sun god and member of the Olympus 12 team. And you know what? Aside of the Digi Egg of Courage, you just heard me mention the similarities Flareomon has to other rather godlike Digimon. Apollomon is a god itself, and Agunimon being the one who bears the might of ancient Greymon. That is why I can actually hardly put Flareomon and its other variants at the champion level. At the very least, they should be ultimate, wouldn't you agree? Randolph Rosenberg wrote the following about Flareomon. Flareomon kind of reminds me of Agunimon, with the whole hairstyle and three holes on various parts of its body and armor. This kind of gives off the idea of an alternate Digital World's legendary warriors, kind of like how Digital World Iliad 
had the Olympus 12 instead of the Royal Knights. That already sounds like a very interesting way to look at the 8 EV Digivolution variants, giving them a similar status as the Royal Knights who are guardian deities of their respective realm. If these 8 are put on the same pedestal, that would mean that they could be on a similar range in terms of power display. Here we have the Digimon equivalent of the Pokemon Vaporeon. This one is called Vapormon, one that can be seen as a Digimon goddess, in a way, for its skills to separate the waters of the seas. Vapormon has a vaccine attribute, meaning that it tends to take a solid approach against evil and injustice. I found Vapormon's appearance interesting and curious because it does look like a humanoid one, but with nothing on its body that can be related to fish, aside of its armor, which has scales, and its helmet, which has fins. So I'm not quite sure how fast and well it would be able to navigate underwater in the deep sea. If we were to put it next to Vaporeon, you can see the difference. Vaporeon shares physical traits with both land animals, in reference to Eevee, and aquatic animals, through its giant tail. And with the gills it has developed, it became better suited to an aquatic lifestyle. Now, Vapormon might not have those when looking at its appearance. Still, it has its fair share of upgrades. Normally Vaporeon prefers clean, fresh water lakes and shores, not oceans. That differs from Vapormon who, with its trident, can separate the waters of the sea, meaning that it is one belonging to the oceans. My only question would be, how much Vapormon would take from Vaporeon, as the Pokemon does have very interesting abilities. For example, its cell compositions are similar to water. These cells allow Vaporeon to melt into the water, an ability enabling it to remain camouflaged while swimming, making it harder to be detected by foes, which, as a result, would give it an advantageous position to ambush its prey. Andres Marrero wrote the following, Vapormon is similar to ancient Mermimon. Again, a comparison to a mega-level god-like Digimon, and a comparison that is quite striking. Both Vapormon and ancient Mermimon do look alike. In fact, they almost look like different variants of one another. Big difference would be that Ancient Mermimon has a body that looks more suitable for deep sea fights, earning it the nickname Demon Beast of the Seabed. But if both are being compared, it only motivates me more to believe Vapormon is not at the champion level. Here we have the Digimon equivalent of the Pokemon Jolteon. This one is called Joltmon, a data type Digimon with the power of lightning. Data means that it is neutral by nature and usually prefers to focus on its own business, which in a way does resemble Jolteon in terms of personality. A Pokemon that mostly reacts when it feels threatened or angered. A very sensitive and temperamental Pokemon with changing moods, causing it to constantly charge up with electricity. Assuming that Jolteon's abilities would be transferred to Joltmon, that would mean that it would also be able to gather negative eons from the atmosphere and use the resulting electricity to create lightning bolts of up to 10,000 volts. It would probably be using that big gun it carries for it. Or, maybe, the gun could be used to do something else. Unfortunately, we don't get any details about its properties, but I can tell that with the gun, it looks as if Joltmon would play the long-range role if these eight were to work in teams. Also, as the armor it carries has a golden color, it might have been made entirely of gold digizoid, an alloy which renders the user completely invulnerable. For more on Chrome Digizoid, there is a video that I made that is fully dedicated to it, link of it is in the description box. Here we have the Digimon equivalent of the Pokemon Sylveon. This one is called Sylvimon, a holy type vaccine Digimon with the power to make two enemies fall in love with each other. This power somewhat reminds me of Marine Angemon, who has skills to make opponents lose their fighting spirit. What I like about Sylvimon a lot is that it is more than what you see. Or rather, this gorgeous appearance is part of his arsenal. Sure, it looks extremely beautiful and quite welcoming with its staff that has a heart at its top, and sure it looks quite inoffensive, but you have got to be a bit careful with your judgement. When you look at its Pokemon counterpart, Sylveon, you'd come to realize that Sylvimon might be among the worst of the eight. Sylveon appears as a kind and gentler Pokemon who uses its charm to hunt in the wild. 
They can bring even the most intense battles to a halt by using their feelers to exude an aura of peace and tranquility, causing those near them to lose their fighting spirit. Sure, they are captivating and outright charming, but that's just a physical advantage it has. What it does is lure prey by using their appearance to catch one's attention. The art of deception, as I like to call it. Despite having an adorable and graceful appearance, Sylveon is heavily implied to be carnivorous and whenever riled up, it will not hesitate to strike no matter how large its opponents are. And according to Galarian fairy tales, Sylveon was depicted when defeating ferocious dragon Pokemon. Whether these are just fairy tales or truth is a mystery, but this does say a lot about Sylveon. And thus, it could potentially say a lot about its Digimon equivalent, Sylvimon, who could be as dangerous. It does look like the type that would bring one into an illusion which would be revealed to be empty. And once the prey is quite lost in its thoughts, or maybe even geographically, that is when Sylvimon would behave in a way that is quite opposite to what you'd expect a Digimon with that appearance would behave, much to the surprise of the victim. Here we have the Digimon equivalent of the Pokemon Glaceon. This one is called Glacimon, a virus type Digimon with the power of ice. And with its weapon, the Chakram, it is capable of freezing anything it touches. Very elegant in appearance, with some Digimon markings on both its legs. Glacimon along with its variant Flareomon are making me wonder how they are going to be working together in teams and how they would behave individually. Anyway, Glacemon's Pokemon equivalent, Glaceon, appears to be acting a little bit different than one with a virus attribute. You see, Glaceon are docile, cool and collected Pokemon. The perfect behavior that makes them skillful hunters. And by using its captivating beauty, it is able to prevent enemies from being aware of eventually being frozen by their icy breath. Another interesting detail about Glaceon, it can control its body heat and freeze the air around to create a diamond dust flurry, causing powdery snow to appear. In addition, it can form a small ice crystal by lowering its surrounding temperature, and the lowest temperature that body can drop to is minus 60 degrees Celsius or minus 75 degrees Fahrenheit, quite the opposite of Flareon. But now, as a Glacimon, the question remains whether it has these same abilities. Also, will it be as docile as its Pokemon counterpart, knowing it is of the virus type? Will it hunt in the same way? I hope the author can clarify some of these questions. Leafmon is the Digimon equivalent of the Pokemon Leafeon. We are talking about the data type Digimon that uses the power of nature to its advantage. Its temperance and its sword are its best weapons in battle. It also looks quite agile with its long legs, perfectly designed for stealth and maybe jumping from one tree to the other. Now with the colors of its attire, it would be quite well camouflaged in the forests. In a way, a true forest native, if you ask me. It has quite a few similarities with Leafeon in terms of behavior and without a doubt in abilities. As Leafeon's Pokédex entry suggests, this Pokémon is mainly pacifist and do not like to fight. It spends the majority of its time bathing and basking under sunlight to perform photosynthesis. Its leaves are razor sharp and capable of slicing through the largest trees. Leafmon also has leaves that I presume could be used in a similar fashion, and it carries an enormous sword. Using the leaves and the sword in combination could make it an interesting close to mid-range combatant, especially in a forest. Oh, and also, for your information, there is another Digimon called Leafmon, a slime Digimon with many plant elements that needs photosynthesis to grow. Espimon is the Digimon equivalent of the Pokemon Espion. We are talking about a Digimon of the vaccine type, one who is capable of using its psychic powers for battle and has the rare ability to teleport. These abilities have their roots in Espion one who is connected with the sun and daylight, which it needed as an Eevee to evolve into one. The gem on its forehead is said to gather psychic energy through sunbathing, making them poor battlers in the dark of night. However, the Pokemon is not to be taken lightly. 
Indeed, Espeon lacks the ability to control any specific element, unlike its other variants. However, it does have a huge degree of control over its own psychic powers, and with those powers it can force some natural forces to work the way it wants, such as diverting fire, water and lightning attacks around it, bending light rays to allow invisibility, bend space-time to allow teleportation, defeat gravity and levitate and predict the future, Espeon can also use their psychic powers to allow them to walk on water. If these abilities were successfully transferred to his Digimon equivalent Espeon, then I'd say that possible foes would be in for some trouble. They'd be fighting the Jean Grey of the team, in reference to X-Men's Jean Grey, one of the most powerful telepaths in the Marvel Universe. Last but not least we have Umbrimon, the Digimon equivalent of the Pokemon Umbreon. We are talking about a Digimon that is of the virus type with the power of darkness. Umbrimon being a dark type is making me wonder about what type of darkness we are talking about. And Andres Marrero shared his idea about the type of darkness. The following was written. Umbrimon may be of the virus type and uses the power of darkness, but its darkness is more similar to ancient Sphinxmon and Loimon's darkness rather than Devimon's and is also connected to the moon and by extension Dianamon. This is evident in its appearance, which is similar to Lobomon, the human spirit of light, and Umbrimon's move Hand of Blame being similar, but very different to Devimon's Touch of Evil. Umbrimon has indeed an attack called Hand of Blame, where it is capable of partially corrupting other Digimon's data. As you know, Digimon are digital creatures made of data. Even partially corrupting a Digimon's data might stop them from working with a full 100% capacity. A pretty broken move if you ask me. Now, to better understand what Umbrimon could do, it would be best to take a closer look at its Pokemon equivalent, Umbreon. Stealth is probably a very defining feature of this Pokemon as it will stalk prey silently during the night before waiting for it to come into range and killing it by biting the throat before eating the corpse. That is because Umbreon, just like Sylveon, is a carnivorous Pokemon. It has good night vision and can spray a cloud of toxic gas from its sweat glands to paralyze the aggressor when agitated. You take these characteristics into account and put them into Umbrimon and you'd have a Digimon with abilities that should be acknowledged as that would mean it could partially corrupt the Digimon's data and could poison one and it would be able to do all of that while being stealthy. And just like that we have been over the 8 different EV evolutions in the Digimon sphere each of which have unique abilities that can certainly add up to the team synergy. My personal opinion is that these 8 don't exactly look like evil Digimon of the likes of those in, let us say, the dark area. Doesn't mean that they are all nice. As some of them are quite nervous with the temper when you think of Flareomon, I can imagine them having some clashes among each other. Could even be that they won't necessarily see each other as equals. And as you have others that are a bit more relaxed in terms of personality, like Leafmon, I could see the individuals come together when the time requires it, and characters like Leafmon would play a huge role in that. I will go ahead and see these 8 as a team of mega level semi godlike Digimon, and if you don't agree, please make sure to write an extensive message in the comment section. So, still, mega level, but be a bit careful. There is a tier list among mega level Digimon and some cannot be compared to one another. Some of you compared the 8 to the Royal Knights, to the D Brigade and even to the Bancho team, which really are, you know, very advanced teams of very complex Digimon. I don't think the 8 EVs are quite there at that level because the Royal Knights and, and even the Bancho team, well, they do have history and crazy abilities. In comparison, I don't believe the 8 EVs can be compared in terms of strengths and abilities, but putting them at the champion level isn't really giving them credit either, considering that some have quite complex and sophisticated abilities. But I don't think it would be responsible to choose them as, let us say, protectors of a server. Hey guys, this is the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I really love the art that is created by the fans, so credits to William Boom, Good work, I swear. These 8 are really interesting in terms of design and even abilities. It got us to talk this long anyways, so it's definitely great work. 
Now guys, make sure to link this video to the author and if you guys want me to discuss other fan art, make sure to tag me on Twitter or just contact me via email. All information are in the description box. You can find the link towards those social medias and everything in the description box. And in case you guys are new, know that all my videos are placed in different Digimon playlists which are always updated. Take for example this video. There is a whole playlist that is dedicated to it. You can find all of them by just walking around in the channel. These playlists are always updated, that way you can easily catch up on newer and older videos.